welcome to Ready, Stem, Go, the show where we speak to some of our awesome alumni and dive into their STEM journeys and the path that they've taken to where they are today. I'm Mackenzie Oliver, and today we're talking Forging Your Own Path with Tammy Bryant. Welcome, Tammy. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. No, not a problem. So Tammy is an outstanding young IT professional and trailblazer for empowering girls and women to code. Tammy has held senior site reliability engineering roles with DigitalOcean, Dropbox, and now Gremlin in San Francisco, helping companies like Amazon, Netflix to build more resilient and systems and to prepare for the unexpected. Tammy created the Go Girl Go for IT conferences for high school students and co-founded the Girl Geek Academy, which today runs in Australia and the USA and encourages women to learn technology, create startups, and build more of the internet. Tammy graduated from QUT with a Bachelor of Information Technology and a Bachelor of Education with First Class Honours. And she also continued her studies in Melbourne with a Master's of Computer Science from RMIT. So what an impressive introduction. Um, And Tammy's actually crossing to us today from San Francisco. What time is it where you are? Hey, it's not, not too late in the afternoon towards the end of my day, but it must be the morning in Australia, but it's very warm here. I'm having a great day. Yeah, beautiful. Like, yeah, you still got light jacket on, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so also we like to start off this show with either sharing, uh, with both sharing either an epic, inspiring or a crazy STEM story. So my little one that I'm going to share today is pretty crazy, actually, Um, The Eco Acoustics team at QUT have been working really hard. They have um, run AI through 30,000 hours of audio for frogs to develop basically like a voice recognition for the different species of frogs that they can hear um, out in the rainforest. So basically they'll be able to now get just a segment of the audio and be able to listen to it and run it through these systems and it will tell them which frogs are in that population, which I think very cute um very exciting to have little little frogs <laughs> all have I love little... that. yeah it's super cute um what about yourself Tammy have you brought a epic inspiring or a crazy stem story or fact with you today? yeah definitely so um my cool inspiring story is that you know when I was living in Australia I grew up um in Eastwood in Sydney so northwest suburbs and um, then I went to study at QUT in Brisbane, which is pretty rare to like, you know, leave home and move to a different city. Um, but I did it. It's awesome. But one of the things I really wanted to do after I graduated was be able to work on systems that were massive scale. And, you know, with Australia's population, it's not super possible to be able to do that. Like the largest systems I worked on had just over a million users, um, which is pretty cool. I love scale and I love big systems. And um, when I moved to America, the largest scale system I ever worked on was for 500 million people uh, with 500 petabytes of data. And that was just awesome. I was like, wow, like that is so cool. And we actually went from 400 million users to 500 million in one year. So scaling up to cater to 100 million new people in a year was just a really fun challenge as a reliability engineer. Yeah. 100%. 100%. I can't even fathom 500 million people <laughs> using the same computer system. That's I know, yeah, right? definitely coming it's from cool. Australia. We have much smaller population. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Totally. I think it's, yeah. So I just was blown away by that, those numbers. Um, so that definitely enabled me to achieve my like large scale systems goal. Yeah. Big check there. Like 500 <laughs> million size check. <laughs> No, it's so exciting. All right, so let's dive in then. Um, so your job description is a chaos engineer. How do you even describe that to new people? What, what's a chaos engineer? Yeah, so it was pretty fun. A lot of the time people go, oh, do you like break systems? I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I do. So yeah, we actually um, thoughtfully figure out how we're going to inject failure into systems to uncover their weaknesses. So it's all about running these different thoughtful planned experiments. And I might inject failure like packet loss, latency, um, crash servers, crash different processes to see how the system handles it. 
But the best way to learn and prevent failure from impacting, you know, other people in the future is by doing it on purpose in the middle of the day and being able to watch it and inspect what goes on. Um, so that's what being a chaos engineer is all about. Uh, and I absolutely love it. I've been doing it for 10 years. I first got my start breaking systems, working at the National Australia Bank, uh, which was a lot of fun. Had an amazing time there for six years. And it's pretty cool when you can make, you know, mortgage broking systems more reliable by actually failing them and breaking them on purpose. Yeah, it, you even listed all these different ways to break them as well. You definitely sound like you know your way around doing some damage um, in some of those programs. <laughs> The damage dealer. Yep. I, a lot of times people say to me, could you break this? Can you break that? I'm like, I can break anything. Like I really can. Like I can break any piece of software that's been thrown at me. The only thing is how long it takes me to break something. So that's like a fun challenge that I set for myself. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll break something in about, you know, maybe 20 minutes at the fastest, but sometimes it's been challenging and it's taken me up to three weeks to figure out how to break a system. So that's like my longest record so far, where you can imagine every night I was dreaming about how I could break this system until I finally did it. <laughs> must destroy, must yeah. destroy. <laughs> where did your fascination with all this start? What, 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 yeah, what was this drive to make these systems more reliable? Or was it just that you wanted to break them? <laughs> Um, I, I think like the biggest thing for me is I've always been curious and um, I love the internet. So I got the internet when I was 12 years old and I just loved understanding how it works. But you know, the thing too is like I was a 12 year old girl on the internet in like 1996 to be like brutally honest, it was a boring place. I was like, there is no place for me to go. Everything looks really lame. It was like a lot of like just black and white text and like not really much else um, back then and it just wasn't very cool. And so I started to think like, you know, how do I make stuff on this internet? Because I could see the potential there. And I just thought it was like this amazing playground. And I love that you don't need permission to make something on the internet. Like anyone can do it. Like you could do it right now. Just put something on the internet and send it to a friend. Um, and then I just love the idea of making it really accessible. So how do you make the internet more reliable and keep it up and running? Um, and then I started to think about, you know, how could the internet potentially break? Like, what if I send something over to my friend and then when they get it, it doesn't load or it doesn't work or like too many people try and use it at the same time and then it doesn't work. Like, so I just wanted to make sure I could build like really awesome, reliable software um, whenever I was making stuff. And I think a lot of my inspiration too comes from skateboarding. Like I love to do things that I've never done before um, and just be brave and give it a go. So that's like how I would learn new skateboard tricks. You know, like I've thrown myself down like five stairs to try and learn how to ollie them. Like that's the only way to learn. Um, and, you know, having folks to support you and other people to cheer you on. Uh, but that's why I love technology and breaking stuff and making things more reliable. Yeah. Yeah. The people supporting you whilst you stack it down the stairs sometimes yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, you definitely need that. You got to have your friends there being like, you try. Yeah. And like in a skateboard community, everyone will hit the skateboard on the ground in a way to cheer you on. So it's oh. like really loud and feels nice. They're like bang, 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 bang. So, you know, it helps you get back up and give it a go. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think that kind of message of yeah supporting people as loud as you can that's really nice yeah. and especially in tech as well that would be a really cool thing to see um yeah. but yeah so what do you attribute your success um yeah that intro we heard before a pretty long list of achievements there what really got you into the game yeah so my big thing definitely is being curious um just giving stuff a go so you know whenever someone would say hey we need a volunteer to do this project I'd be the first person to put up my hand and I'd even say like, I don't know how to do this. I've never done this before. Like the first time that I did that, um, you know, in a big moment was when I was at the National Australia Bank, we were having these big problems where one of our systems just wasn't working at all. And, you know, we had, someone had to go and get up every morning, Monday morning, fly from Melbourne to Sydney, come back Friday. And I was like, I'll do it. And then my boss was like, oh, well, I guess Tammy like wants to do it. She's passionate about it. I'm sure we'll just have her learn how to do it on the job. So, you know, that's the thing, just give it a go. And then the other thing that's important is to have mentors and then eventually find people to sponsor you and just give you those opportunities to believe in you. Um, but I feel like you can find those folks wherever you go throughout your career and just even in your own personal life too. Um, one of my mom's friends, he worked at Microsoft. So I was able to ask him, what's it like working in tech? Like, you know, do you have any tips for me when I was in high school even? Um, so yeah, that's a lot of my ways that I've gotten there. 
yeah, reaching out to people that are on that other side, maybe getting a bit of that, yeah, insider goss as well. Yeah, that really helps. Like just asking people, you know, what is it like? Like, how would I be able to pass an interview? What kind of questions do I need to prepare for? Or a lot of the time, I think folks um, just haven't really planned out their resume very good. It's really important to have a good um, LinkedIn resume. And maybe you're not sure about what you should put there. But even if you look at my LinkedIn, then you'll be able to get tips and ideas for how you could structure your LinkedIn. And then that would make yours look a lot better. A lot of the time, like my main tip there is make sure that it outlines what you've delivered yourself. Like I delivered this project um, as a high school project or as a project in your spare time and have a link to it, even if possible, if it's a website or a mobile app or something like that, or even a YouTube video about something you built. But just really showcasing what you actually created is really important in the world of tech. Um, and then people can get excited about it. And the other thing too that I did early on was I was always tweeting what I was making and I would show like progress updates and people got very excited about that. Like one of the cool things that happened from doing that, um, like I just graduated from QUT and I actually was really missing going to class and like learning how to build all these new things. And so when I started working on my job, I was like dedicated to one technology, like one system. I had to keep that system up and running and reliable, but I wanted to learn like other new things and figure out, you know, what was coming up in the future. So I started to do some coding in my spare time. And back then HTML5 was really big. And um, so I started to just play around with that. And I built like the first um, HTML5 radio, like online radio. And I tweeted about it and then Google saw it. And Google was a big um, supporter of HTML5 at the time. And they asked me to be a judge for their competition. And so then I was like this judge on this HTML5 competition. Yeah, yeah. So I know, so cool. Like, um, and it's just, you never know what's going to happen. So just give it a go, like try it out. <laughs> I'm convinced to go sign up for Twitter as soon as we finish this interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's where everyone in tech is. Like there's like definitely a tech Twitter on, the, on there. Like you'll find everyone. You can follow amazing mentors. You can tweet to some of the best people in tech and they'll write back to you. You know, you can follow people who invented like all of the coolest technologies and see what they're doing. So yeah, definitely give it a go. Yeah. And <laughs> just that opportunity, like you said before, about just putting your hand up for something, um, even if you're perhaps not feeling that qualified for it, if you're just enthusiastic. But I guess that it even comes with, if you just wanted to reach out and talk to someone that's in somewhere that you yep. want to do, you just got to go for it. Yep, exactly. Like I always say, you know, on Twitter, like everyone starts with zero followers, like that's fine. Everyone starts there. And then you build up your following and your network and you create that. Um, and, you know, you just have to give it a try, get out there, talk to people, meet people, like have fun with it, you know, because there are a lot of cool people you can meet. Like I've met amazing friends um, by Twitter, also just in person in San Francisco, um, also living in New York. At QUT, I made so many friends that are lifelong friends through the different classes that I went to. Um, and yeah, I just encourage you, you know, there's this whole amazing world out there and the people that you meet when they have common interests to you or maybe they teach you something really cool. Like that is, I think, one of the best things ever. Like you'll never forget it. And, you know, when you get to meet people that created your favorite stuff, like, um, for example, my husband, like he worked in 10 years in video games. So he created some very popular video games. Um, he worked on Smite, Jackpack Fighter. They're very well known. So it's like just so cool to, um, you know, be around people that are building amazing, inspiring things every day. Like you'll see that once you join Twitter and just get online even more. 100%. And yeah, like you said, there's just such a community out there. Um, yeah, there's just such an opportunity to meet all these really exciting, inspired people that want to talk about what they're doing and want to share that passion with, yeah, that what an awesome way to reach out as well. Yeah, it's definitely really good. Like, I think, you know, you might be maybe I, I started off quite shy um, when I first was in high school. I was like, oh, like, what would I even ask as a question? Um, and then I sort of pushed myself out of my comfort zone, which is good to do. And I, I did do that by, you know, through my studies. So something good that we did at university was we would build an application. We made like a mobile application and then we had to pitch it. They invited in folks to come and see what we built and then they gave us feedback. But that made me be less scared about showing people what I've created. Um, and then after that, you know, you do that all the time at work. You'll build things and show people and get feedback. 
Um, but then you can go, hey, instead of just showing like my close network, I'm going to just put it on the internet and see what people think. And if people are like, hey, that's actually really cool, then you're like, oh, wow, like maybe I just made a new friend. And then you can see what they're making. Um, and I think that's a, it's really important when you're a creative person, because I do think that technology is very creative and it's a fun way to be able to do different things. Like I never find it boring. There's so many different things all the time. And the other thing to remember is like, you know, if you pick a new technology, you can be one of the world's best experts in it because it's so new. Like that's the thing. You could be like one of five people in the world that have ever used that technology because it just came out. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Speaking to the, yeah, the HTML5 um, radio mm -hmm. startup right here, <laughs> <laughs> leading expert. Yeah. But yeah, another really cool project that you've been involved with is the Girl Geek Academy. So what was the drive behind that? What really pushed you to see that kind of gap or that need? Yeah. Um, so, you know, one interesting thing in technology that you will see is there's not as many women as I thought there was going to be like that work in tech. And I thought there was going to be a lot of women working in tech originally because I went to an all girl school and our um, classes like were so packed out. We had to have like multiple technology classes uh, because every single girl wanted to study technology. It was a very popular elective. Uh, we were making databases. I speak a bit American there. You see that? That's funny. <laughs> um, and uh, websites. And we were doing so much cool stuff. It was before mobile apps existed. But um, after that, I was like, you know, of course I'm going to go study, you know, technology at university, hands down. Like I, I just went and um, decided to do that straight away. And when I got there, it was kind of weird. Like, because I remember walking into the room, the big lecture theater, there's like a thousand people and there was just a sprinkling of girls. And I was like, oh, weird. Like, where are all the girls? I thought girls love technology. Like, what is this? And then in all my classes, I always had like one or two girls that I made friends with straight away. Um, and, you know, we would always hang out and be on projects together. And a bunch of guys as well that are awesome that I'm still friends with. But um, I just think there should be more girls studying technology because that's the best way to get a career in technology, I think. Like, it's a I learned so much practical knowledge, um, how to work with networks, how to understand databases, how to do security engineering, like all of that I learned through my studies. And um, I think like the amazing thing there is if we have more girls and women building the internet, I just think it's gonna be a way cooler place. Like the fact that anyone can create anything is awesome, um, but you don't want it to be bland and boring. So, you know, just need to get your keyboard out, like sit down with some friends and be like, what are we gonna build this weekend? run your own mini hackathon. Um, that's the sort of thing that I like to do. And that's why I was really inspired. So I actually got a part-time job at QUT running Go Girl, Go for IT, which was a program to inspire high school girls to study at QUT. And after doing that, I thought that was very cool. Then I moved to Melbourne to work at the National Australia Bank. I got into their graduate programmer um, position there, which was awesome and um, worked there for six years. But during that time, I just wanted to meet more women that were interested in technology. So I started to run Girl Geek Dinners Melbourne with a friend, Jeffs. Um, we ran that for a bit, but I was like, I'm much more practical. Like I love being practical and learning by doing, and I love technology because I love making stuff. And so then I decided to create Girl Geek Academy with some friends so we could do like weekend hackathons and workshops to learn how to um, build mobile apps or try new programming languages. And the coolest thing there was, you know, we just created this amazing, fun, vibrant experience. We would do stuff like have a nighttime workshop on coding where we would have dinner with like picnic blankets and stuff. It was like so fun. Um, and do a hackathon with yoga as well in the middle of it. And I'd never done yoga before. So it was like fun to try um, with these huge, amazing buffets of like delicious food that companies would sponsor because they're all so happy to support us. Um, that's a big thing too. A lot of companies really want there to be more women and girls in tech. And we would ask for 10,000 bucks, like to be able to sponsor these events. And we just get yeses all the time. And then we didn't, we didn't even need more money because we had enough money to cover all of our budget and needs. And we could raise more money for charity, which is what we did. Um, and then at the end of those sessions, we would celebrate and just share with everyone what we'd created with our family and friends. And just like memories I'll never forget because they were so fun. Yeah, well, yoga a mean feed and a whole bunch of hacking girls it sounds like a pretty awesome way to spend a weekend so yeah definitely so that was all down in melbourne when you get to do all that sort yeah. of 
Yeah, so we started doing those in Melbourne and then we've also run them in other cities in Australia, Brisbane, Sydney. And then um, I also ran, so we actually ran the first ever all women hackathon in Australia. Then I moved to New York and ran the first ever hackathon for women in America, which I didn't realize at the that's time. Cool. I was like, did I just do the first time thing ever? Wow, oh, that's cool. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I did. And it was so cool. I made a lot of friends, obviously. It's a great way to make friends when you move to a new city. We had maybe 70 women show up, um, which was really cool. And then I did the same thing in San Francisco. Um, so yeah, I, I find like, you know, to me, coding doesn't have to be in a, in a dark basement, you know, like you can have fun and like do it with friends. And when you're working in a career where you work with technology, you know, you're always working with designers and product managers and business folk, you know, finance people, different people from different teams to try and figure out what's the best thing that we can build together. Um, and it's a really cool creative job. So I think that the hackathon actually is much more like what it is like to actually have a great job. Like that's what a great job should feel like, that you come in and you're passionate and you're excited and you're energized and you're having fun with friends and you build something amazing that people want to use. Like that's like the dream. Yeah. Yeah. And that we're like, yeah, really creative side that you were speaking about. I think maybe sometimes people lose touch of that. Yeah. Oh, maybe IT is that kind of basement description that you were saying, but yeah, yeah. it is so creative and it is so exciting. Yeah. Like if you think about it too, like, you know, what are jobs that are more creative, right. Than technology. Like, I just feel like, you know, there's new technologies being created every day. Um, it's something where it's, there's just, it's just a blank canvas. You can build anything you like on the internet and there's not really any rules. Like, I feel like, you know, if you were going to try and do fashion, for example, there's kind of like a few rules around what you can or can't make. And, you know, you need to use like a lot of materials specifically when you go and look at stores, a lot of the fashion looks kind of the same a lot of the time. Um, but with the internet, you can just go wild. Like no one's going to be like, whoa, that's too wild for the internet. Like better take that down. No, it just stays there. <laughs> so you mentioned a little bit about, um, yeah, those younger girls that you might've had a chance to um, yeah, teach, um, perhaps even mentor. Um, what about yourself? Have you had any, any like um, mentors or career heroes along your journey so far? Yeah, definitely. So, um, I mean, I feel like there's mentors all over the place. You just have to find people that you think you would like to talk to and reach out to. So one of my really awesome mentors, actually, he's the reason I got a job in America in the first place. So I was, you know, I grew up in Australia, but I always dreamed of moving to America because I really wanted to live in Silicon Valley. You know, I just heard a lot of stories about it and I thought it'd be cool to be able to go there one day. And I wanted to work with other folks in technology and cool big companies. And so when I worked at the National Australia Bank, he was my boss's boss and I was working as a security engineer. And one day he said, oh, I'm leaving um, the company because I'm moving to America because I got a job to work at this company, Puppet, and his name's James. And so I just said to him, um, wow, that's cool. Can I like keep in touch with you? Because one day I'd love to move to America. And he was like, yeah, sure. You know, that's all it takes to like create that mentor relationship. And then I followed him on Twitter and I would be like, hey, what's it like over in Portland? And he told me about what it was like there. And then um, I said to him, hey, like, I really, really want to move there still. And it had been a few years, about three or two and a half years since he left. And I, he said to me, well, what job do you want? Find the company that you most want to work at. Tell me what company that is and I'll see if I can help you out. So I spent like some time doing research and I found this company. I was like, this is the company that I've decided. It was called DigitalOcean. And I was like, this is the number one company in all of America that I want to work at. And so I wrote to James and I said to him, I pick the company, like, this is it. And he's like, no way. I'm friends with the guys that run that company. I was like, of course. <laughs> Yeah, because he was living in New York as well. And he was the VP of engineering at Kickstarter. And he's like, yeah, I've been advising them and working with them. I'll just, you know, send them an email about you. And that's what he did. And that's how I got my first job. Like, well, the worst Beautiful. <laughs> See, this is like a big case of like, yeah, just put your hand up. Just ask for it. You really don't know what's going to come of it. And it could yeah. just literally be as easy as like, oh, easy, done. <laughs> Yeah, like that's what it was like. Like I was like, oh, wow. And that got me my interview. And then everyone knew that, you know, I'd already worked for him. So that was a great referral and I'd done a great job on his team. Um, and so, yeah, like I think you never know how things are going to work out. Like I kind of just give stuff a go and just like 
see, hey, well, oh, yeah, stay in touch with that friend and see how that person's going. And, you know, I don't have any like clear expectations or goals around things. Like I sort of was like, I'd like to move to America in six months. And I ended up moving there. I think it was in two months because it just worked out really well. Um, and that was my whole thing there. But, you know, since then I've been able to do so much cool stuff like that people have helped me with and it's been really awesome. Um, I wanted to speak at conferences. So I got like my first shot at being able to do that because of some friends. And then I also wanted to write a technical book and I was able to do that with the help of O'Reilly. Um, they just like said, yeah, we'll work with you to do that. So, you know, I think like a lot of folks out there, if you've got some really big dreams and goals, the first step is just sharing them. Because the thing that I realized is not everyone has the same goals. And you might be thinking that you're competing, but actually other people have different goals than you. So it's totally cool. Like not everyone's number one dream is the same dream that you have. So it's okay to just put it out there and see what happens. Yeah, like, yeah your metric of success is entirely unique. You definitely exactly. can't directly compare. And especially if you don't know what that other person is really like thinking that their dreams are like, just as you said. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's something we don't think about often, like sit down and reflect. Like I've never had anyone say to me, like, what's the number one company you want to work at in all of America? But I think that's a great question. You know, what's the number one company you'd like to work at in the whole world? Like maybe you actually can do it. Maybe it's possible. Um, maybe you want to create your own company. Like that's what a lot of people want to do as well. So, or maybe you have a dream that you want to make the first like, you know, virtual reality game specifically around a certain thing that doesn't exist yet. Like, yeah. And then if you say that, then you might meet other people that want to do it with you. So I think that's something that's happened to me too. Um, you'll be able to either meet someone directly that you know, or someone will go, hey, you should talk to my friend about that because I heard them talking about that too. And maybe you could do it together. Yeah. Just, yeah, put the feelers out. You never know yeah. if it's going to come back. Yep, exactly. That's the whole idea there. And yeah. it definitely works. Yeah, you've spoken so much about, yeah, the people that you've met, um, what, yeah, when we're talking about your role now and when you're back at uni and everything. So that network seems so fundamental to you. Yeah. Um, do you think that is a really key part of how you've gotten to where you are? Yeah, definitely. Like I have people that, you know, I worked with in the past that I would love to work with again because they were so amazing and I hope to get to do that. Um, in America, when you go out to dinner, there's this thing called like a family style meal where everyone just orders a different dish. And instead of ordering your one meal that you eat by yourself, you just order a whole bunch of different meals and then that's family style. And that's like what it's like working at these companies. Everyone just puts in and then you just share together the success and of that. And you're like, wow, that tastes great. Can I try some of that? Pass that over there. Um, and I think that's the culture that I really love where it just feels amazing and you're working together and you're celebrating it. Yeah. And the food analogy works very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Family style meals, the, the funnest. It's so fun. <laughs> 100%. I want to try everything all the time. So it works so well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So before we close up, uh, we like to ask if you can have a bit of a reflect, um, knowing what you could know, what, knowing what you know now, What's the one thing that you would go back and perhaps tell your younger self? Um, I think I would tell myself like, you know, just keep having fun with friends on the weekend, do projects together, like explore your creative side. Like don't, don't feel bad for like wanting to do that and having fun doing that. Like, I think it makes you really, really well-rounded. Like I actually spent a lot of time skateboarding every day after school for two hours and um, I was always like, I don't know if there's a good use of my time, but it's so much fun and I love it. And, you know, I think that was good. Like I, I just would encourage my younger self to do that, to like try all these activities. Like I tried surfing, I tried roller skating, like skateboarding, rock climbing, arm sailing. Like I think, you know, the more different experiences you try, um, the better and more fulfilled you'll feel later on. So like, I think that's really what it's all about. And as you, um, you know, move through life, you'll be able to draw back on those memories. And it also helps you just be a lot braver about trying new stuff. And that's how I think you'll have a really great successful career, but also time working um, while you're studying as well. Just keep being positive. That's my other thing too. I was always positive when I was young. And um, yeah, you know, you never know what is going to um, like lead on to some other thing. So just having these experiences I think it just creates more opportunities in the future. So yeah, just definitely get out there and give it a go. You never know who you're going to meet. 
give it a go stay positive yeah keep meeting people just yeah beautiful messages absolutely wonderful it has been an absolute pleasure to speak with you tammy um yeah hearing all these little bits of advice um how you can apply all these different things, perhaps, yeah, just from greater life into a career in tech and staying creative and staying curious. Um, it's been, yeah, absolutely wonderful to speak with you. Thank you again. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye and good luck. Thank you again. And join us next time for another episode of Ready, Stem, Go. Uh, make sure to like our Facebook page, STEM is for me with the number four to keep up to date with uh, our latest events and resources.